It's week 11 of the National Football League, and we'll see Cole Holcomb. He picked up a sack last week as part of an eight-tackle game. It's the Steelers and the Browns, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. From just off the shores of Lake Erie, EA Sports brings you coverage of the NFL from Cleveland Brown Stadium in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap as it will be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They come into this one knowing it's been a while since tasting victory. They've dropped four in a row. Can they remember what it was like to win a game? In these types of situations, you're looking for someone to inspire you, and it doesn't have to be one of your best players either. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, they come in off another victory a weekend ago. That ran their win streak up to seven now. And I think that win last week established them as Super Bowl frontrunners. They're playing with confidence and swagger, and you need that to go a long way. And no run back on the opening kickoff. It'll come out to the 25. And the Cleveland offense ready to go to work behind the three-time Pro Bowler Deshaun Watson in his second season now as a Brown, number seven overall. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. Now it's right here going to be taken in by the tight end to Joku. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 25 yards there on the catch and run. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. From the 50, it's Watson. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And here, Charles, is a look at the inactive, some of the guys that are out today due to injury. Yeah, and this is where the preseason work comes into play for some of those backups. It's not just them getting some experience on the field, but preparing each week in practice as if they were going to play. And when you have guys like that on your team, you've got a chance for success when the injury bug hits. They'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Watson looks to throw again. And he's going to go down here as sack. They push him back to the 34. Joey Porter Jr. brings him down, and that's a play he's going to remember. The first sack of his NFL career. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Now Watson. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked off by Joey Porter Jr., They may have thrown the interception, obviously less than ideal, but I think they also sent a message that they're going to push the ball downfield in this one. Yeah, not afraid to take their shots right away, huh? What was that, like a 9-9-9 nine, nine, nine route? Nine meaning go? Just went ahead and went for it. Didn't work out so well because it certainly appeared the defense was prepared, but I'm with you. Okay, so it didn't work this time. Doesn't mean we won't try it again later. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. And bottom line, when you're the starting QB, what is it? Get the W. Get the W. They did that last week. Right, got, the, got that done. Wasn't always pretty. There were some great moments. He threw four touchdown passes. But got to eliminate those mistakes. Got to take care of that, because otherwise, that could come back and bite him in another ball game. The boy showing how tough he can be to bring down, just fighting his way forward to pick up seven yards. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Second down, here's Pickett. A short one there to fire you. 
And Flyer move going to have a Steelers first down as he'll get this down to the 30-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. First down, Steelers. Pickett will look to throw it here. Pass complete. George Pickens with it. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. Harris running straight ahead. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that's the big fellas MO right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not this. That throw finds Pickens in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. A great play there. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Steelers take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. Boswell good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. Peoples-Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. here. second and a yard from the 34. Out of the gun, Watson. Right back to Njoku. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. These two teams, they met up earlier in the year, back in week two. And it was the visiting Browns who got the victory then, so they'll look for the season sweep here in Cleveland. On first down, it's Watson. His throw incomplete. You look at this Steeler defense. They played extremely well last week in that win over the Packers. And the big difference in the game, their ability to force turnovers. Multiple, in fact. Being able to take the ball away, give it back to their offense, the big difference in the game. It was impressive. Now the question, can they duplicate it? They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And Deshaun Watson, and when you think about the toughest quarterbacks in the league to game plan against, he's got to be in your top five, does he not? And when you talk about game planning, putting him in the top five, that's an easy call because he can make every throw. That's not an issue at all. He has great touch delivering the football, but that mobility, that added dimension, oh, when he escapes the pocket and those receivers find their way open, short, medium, and long, he finds the right guy. And last but not least, his toughness. He can stand in the pocket, take a hit, and deliver. And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. 
And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And are you one of those early holiday shoppers, partner? Are you one of those guys get your list done? Because I think about what every team has on their holiday shopping list right now. What's the number one goal? Make the playoffs. Number two, win your division. Number three, and I think the biggest goal of all, try to get the number one seed so you get that first round by and ensure you don't have to go anywhere in January and hopefully get to the Super Bowl that way. From the 24 now, here's second and six. Pickett going to bootleg it. He'll buy some time right. And that one complete downfield to Johnson. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Big yardage after the catch. That one winds up going for 36. When they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Now a give running left is Harris. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. The Steelers at 8-1 and one on the year. They come in here hot. I mean, over the last nine, Charles, they are 8-1. and one. And that record, the way that they're playing, they've proven to me and I think anyone else in the league that they're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone and they look forward to the challenge. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. They could throw every move in the book at them. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Throwing on third down, here's Pickett. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 26. The third down conversion successful. A gain of 11. Gets this out wide to Pickens. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. out of the shotgun and he's going to ball his way down to about the one yard line that's a gain of seven and we'll leave them with second and goal coming up it's larger been the air attack that's gotten them down here but now is where you start to lean on that running game that's a good pick up there on first and goal they're going to run this with a tight end and he's into the end zone touchdown Steelers Connor Hayward his first rushing touchdown on the year. And the Steelers go up by two touchdowns. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles. A great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back. And they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. Peoples-Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. Cleveland offense making their way out, and they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? play sheet that can work get back to basics is usually your answer and make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands yeah, still second quarter you get points on the board here I think you're feeling okay and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole 
He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Chubb on the counter. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Now a stoppage here for an injury. And oh boy, that looks to be the quarterback, Watson. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. Now second and three. Off the play fake, here's Dobbs. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Nick Herbig in there to drop him, and that will go in the books as the first sack of his young NFL career. Congratulations, young man. Well, you're already up a couple of scores here in the first half defensively, and Charles, they just seem to be playing really free on that side of the football. I love the observation because with that type go. of a lead, they feel like they can take a few more chances and be even more aggressive, and it's been paying off for them so far this game. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. It's complete, swings it out to his running back. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out, and he is going to need to bomb this one. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. Wow, partner, it's almost a little jarring to see a holder set up on the other side of midfield. I haven't brought out my binoculars to make sure on that one. But that is showing an awful lot of confidence in a kicker to try and hit from 61 yards, and this one winds up no good. Off play action, pick it. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that in-line point-of-attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. This is third and one, very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it, and that will extend their lead even further. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. Peoples-Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. Well, no, but don't let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called called a I think you just called it desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. On play action, it's Dobbs. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. Cole Holcomb proving too much there for the offensive line. He gets the sack. That's three sacks now. That's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team 
They lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. Ready. The Browns on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. To throw is Dobbs. And this is going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Here's Corey Bajorquez now. Gets past one man. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Najee Harris and the Steeler offense set to go to work once again. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Pick it in trouble, and down he goes. It was Henry Anderson who got in there to get him down. I think this defense, Charles, realizing the deficit they're facing, they're going to have to step up and make more plays like we just saw there. Yeah, and those are the type of plays that can focus a defense because, as we know, they've had their trouble so far in this one. But they just proved to themselves that they can get to him, and I expect them to continue to bring that type of pressure in order to try and turn around their fortunes. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. A breakdown defensively there as the scramble is going to set him up with a much more manageable third down. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes it manageable now. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. And they'll go ahead and down this one right on the chalk of the 20-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Okay, ready. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if... Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Cole Holcomb. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. He's continuing to be a big presence defensively. Remember last week, AFC Defensive Player of the Week and a big pick right there. And when you pile up big numbers, it gets everyone's attention. But sometimes the number just needs to be how many game-changing plays did you make? Did you take the ball away from the other team? He just did that, trying to win the award again this week. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. But following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. On the give, this is Harris. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Some teams like to start aggressive to begin a drive, but this is still what you expect to see in normal situations. Just call a simple run, get a few yards to begin the series, and set yourself up for something bigger on second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They'll come up second and seven. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers are able to widen their lead here in this first half. The touchdown was scored by the runner. But the offensive line, they feel like it's theirs. They blocked that one up perfectly. Allowed him easy access to the end zone. Extra point now by Boswell. And the lead is now 24. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. 
Peoples Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And Dobbs is going to be swallowed up as he'll go down. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Down several scores and playing behind the chains is not the way to have success in this one. Right now, if you're the offensive line, your big concern, protecting your quarterback, even a chance to try and throw something downfield to pick up the needed yardage. He's got the connection to Moore. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. There he goes, left side. Well, that's always a risk on those longer kicks. You have to drive it low to get it there. That opened the door for a better chance for the defense to get a hand on it, and that's just what we saw there. And even if the odds increase a little bit because it's a longer field goal attempt, it's still difficult to get hands on the football and create a block. Big-time excitement for that unit getting through and knocking that one away. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Pick it, back to throw. Setting up the screen, Harris. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. A good position to be in here, second and inches. Back to throw, pick it. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, right side. Four yards the pick up, first down. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. On first and ten, it's Pickett. Completes this one to Pickens. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Pick it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now pick it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. They'll throw again with Pickett. Open man is Johnson. Touchdown, Steelers. Deontay Johnson as the first half is winding down. And the Steelers would extend their lead here just before halftime. Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL. And I don't know if last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that. So he continued to survey the field, picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second-year quarterback. 
And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Here's Dobbs to throw. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Njoku. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. A final shot before break. Dobbs. He's going to look deep for more. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a rout. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, where it was definitely a game with some intrigue, as you can see by the scoreline. Joe Burrow, excellent in the victory, as it's one that pushes his guys two games above 500. From there, we head over to Detroit. Check on the Lions at home, Ford Field. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. Chase Claypool, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. A good performance from Bryce Young, the rookie, with two touchdown passes. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. The highlights from the first half, all one-sided. This one got out of hand early, and now you have to wonder how these teams will approach this second half, because this one's already close to being in the bag if it's not already. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead, and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. And it's a pretty good return here, so get this up to the 29. So here are the Steelers to take over on offense. They've got the lead right now, and remember, they are riding that very impressive seven-game winning streak, trying to push it to eight. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. Just shy of the 30. Harris will start to drive out. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. And the linebacker, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa on the tackle. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Looking to throw, Pickett. Throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Browns will take over with a first and ten deep in their own territory. Let's go now. On first down, Dobbs to throw. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. Here's second and three. And Chubble tried the middle here. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Nice job there on the tackle. Keep him to the short game. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award 
because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you, keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. Well, they certainly aren't letting up today, partner, because they've forced big turnovers already. And it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. Runs through the contact. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And they will take over first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. A good hands there defensively at second down. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit. A lot of people making plays behind him in the field. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Third and two, pick it. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I had to do a double take on that one, Brandon, because so far in this game, we haven't seen many of his passes fall incomplete. On is the punter man as he boots this one away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Cleveland offense making their way out. But well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here and maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. And Chubb going to push forward and pick up a Browns first down as the tackle made right at the 30-yard line. Dobbs looking to throw on first down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Montrevious Adams breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. And it has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. Here's third and a few inches. Dobbs is throwing. I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And there's another stop. One of the league's best defenses is certainly bringing it again this week. The Browns send out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch signal for and taken at about the 15-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 16. Harris starts the drive on the ground. They'll get him to the ground at the 20 following a pickup of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett sliding out of the pocket toward the sideline. And look at that catch. Dragging the toes. And that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On a jet sweep, this is Johnson. 
Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the Jets sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house, so they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Line of scrimmage, the 36 on second and eight. They hand this off to Harris. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Credit Zadarius Smith able to get through and make that tackle for a loss. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Here's one deep for Pickens. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Third and long for Pickett. That's going to be caught by Pickens. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now. Down at the 33. Pickett will look to throw it here. And that'll be incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Third quarter action. Appreciate you joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. Second and 10. This is Harris, trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down, here's Pickett. He's got his target, that's complete. And they're gonna have another first down as he's gonna be tackled at the Browns 16. 18 yards the gain for number 18. And the Steelers first down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. To the air on first down with Pickett. Pickens on the slant. And the Steelers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Tell you what, partner, the way he's been slinging in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. Harris. Will score. Touchdown, Steelers. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time, he had the speed to win that race. Boswell for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. 
That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Peoples-Jones going to elect not to run this out, and they'll begin at the 25. And the Browns getting set to go. It's now appearing that this losing streak is going to continue. You know, the coaching staff was confident that this was going to be the game to stem the tide, but that just has not been the case. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Well, hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. On first and 10, Dobbs. And his throw here is incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Back to throw, Dobbs. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They set up the screen to Chubb, and he can only get this to the 42-yard line, and that is not near enough. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Now Austin. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. We find ourselves here in the midst of a one-sided affair. A lot, of, a lot of fill time down the stretch, Mr. Davis. So we could talk about food because that is something that you and I we, both we, enjoy. We, share we, that. we enjoy our time at the table. So maybe the best steakhouses in the city, but in all seriousness, the performances that we've seen this year, we've seen a bunch of great ones, and it's going to be hard to parse who's going to win the MVP. Yeah, it really is. Right. Is it going to be a runner? Is it going to be a thrower? Can a defender finally win it this season? Those are the things that we could probably discuss. And collectively, this is about as dominant of a performance as you could have hoped for on both sides of the football. Might have to put it number one for what we've seen this season. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good. Oh, what was he thinking there? It's easily intercepted. Picked off by Greg Newsom. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Out of the gun, Dobbs. This is Aikens hauling in the short pass. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Uh, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit better. From the 25, here's a second and eight. And again, it's Chubb. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. And they'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. To throw his Dobbs. And he is caught. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 14. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Dobbs. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And the Browns are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. 
Well, I mean, look, obviously there's no 20 or 30 point play in that playbook, but they can try to end things here on a positive note despite trailing big, and that looks like what they're trying to do here by pushing the ball downfield. Well, let me go with the heavy cliche then, partner. Just control what you can control right now. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Jordan Akins from four yards out. And the Browns are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Extra point by York is up and good. As they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. This taken in right around the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. And this team continues to stake its claim as Super Bowl favorites. They are now eyeing an eighth straight win as they begin this drive here in the fourth quarter. A running play here on first down is going to go nowhere as he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Two things to watch. First, his strength and being able to break out that initial contact. But at his size, once you slow his momentum, it's hard for him to get it started again and end up tackling him behind the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he will make it back to the line of scrimmage, but that is all. Fourth down coming up as we reach the two-minute warning. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fielded at the 20. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Dobbs. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it's now a loose football. The ball comes out. There he goes, Amari Cooper. And it's a defensive return for a late touchdown. So they still need some of the miracle here, but at least that gets them a little bit closer. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn? So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Throwing here, Dobbs. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him, and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Here's Dobbs to throw. It throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. It just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. 
Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. And they take a knee. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was their defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So for Pittsburgh, the great...